page 492. You had just four problems on this page. Numbers 1 through 70 odd at the very bottom of the page. You did 1 through 70 um, in the review in the middle of the page. Those are not what we were going for. Uh, 1 through 7 at the bottom of the page with sequences. And uh, what is a sequence anyway? Michael? It is a series of numbers. Oh, it's not a series of numbers. It is a grouping of numbers. It is a, it's a list of numbers. You can say it's a group of numbers. It's a list of numbers that have a rule, have a rule for that list that determines the numbers. Now, the reason I couldn't take his answer that it's a series of numbers, because a series is actually different from a sequence. What is a series, Brandon? Uh, a sum of all the numbers in a sequence. It's the sum of the numbers in a sequence. So the sequence is the list of numbers. The series is the sum thereof. And, uh, but for here, we were just looking at sequences with the 1 through 7 ottoman back on page 461, I believe it was. You had some other problems, which we'll get to momentarily. But let's start with the 1 through 7. That's it right there. 1 through 7 odd. Bueno. Bueno. Si. Da. Ah. All right. <laughs> Number 1. It wanted the third and the seventh terms of the sequence uh, defined by the algorithm a sub n equals 3n minus 8. What were the third and seventh terms? Audrey? 1 and 13. 1 and 13 is correct. Number 3, uh, we have a recursive sequence. And they said that in the directions, but they didn't need to, Abby. We would have known it was a recursive sequence because... It has the a seven minus 1. It would be a sub n minus 1. Given that a sub 1 is 4, they wanted the uh, the next, or the first five terms. And what were those first five terms? 4, 8, 16, 28, and 56. I was with you on the first three, but the last couple, no. Genesis? 4, 16, 32, Yeah, I got 4, 8, 16, 32, 64 for those. Um, so you got the 4, you got the 8, you got the 16. Should have added 5 to get 21, double to get 42, minus 10, 32. You said you had a 28, is that correct? Mm -hmm. um, I don't know what you did then. Um, yeah, not quite sure. Uh, number 5, they gave us the 13, 17, 21, 25. Well, what's the pattern we're following? Back to Abby. Um, you add 4. Yeah, just add 4, so the next term's got to be uh, 29. 29. Just add 4, really easy there. And for number seven, they gave you information about an arithmetic sequence, which, by the way, number five was an arithmetic sequence also because we're adding a constant. By the way, what do we call that value we keep adding over and over again in an arithmetic sequence class? The value that is added to each term to get the next term in arithmetic sequence. Difference. Kind of. That's half its name. The common difference. There we go. The common difference. And they gave that there in number seven. The 20th term was what they were looking for, given the first term's four, and the common difference is nine. What's that formula we needed here, uh, Kendall? 1 sub n equals a sub 1 times a minus 1 times a. Really close. Correct the formula for her there. Uh, Maddie? A sub 1 equals a sub 1 plus a minus 1. There we go, plus the n minus 1 times d. So not a multiplication here, but adding the difference times 1 less than the term you're looking for to that first term. So what should we have had for that 20th term in number 7, Maddie? 175 should have been our answer. Is that what you had? No, so you really did multiply. Okay, so I wasn't sure if it was just a, a weight the way you said it, or maybe you misread something, or if you really did think times. So remember adding it on there to 19, 1 less than 20, times the common difference of 9, and then adding that onto that first term, which was 4. Gives us 175. Questions at all on the 1 through 7 odd? Questions on that? Anyone perfect on 1 through 7 odd? Okay, Brandon, Maddie, good job. Anyone just missed one of them? Okay, the one we missed, we understand. Okay. Questions at all? All right, flip back to page 461. Again, working with series here. And uh, yesterday, uh, we took the basic series, is, 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 and uh, we showed how they can work together. So we can really find uh, any, um, any series. Now, 
In these series that we were looking at for 22 through 28, the even, they had polynomials in many cases, uh, not just i or i squared or a constant, right? But they had other stuff in that little thing after the series notation. What do we call the, the rule, if you will, that tells us what we're taking the series of? Anyone? It's not the algorithm. That's what we call it in a sequence. When you get to the series, it we refer to it as the... Oh, Michael should remember this from yesterday. <laughs> argument. The argument of the series. And again, what is that Greek letter that tells us we're finding a summation or a series class? Sigma. And um, so we were taking the series in each case of a more involved argument. Uh, they were kind and left the lower bound in every case as a one. We like that. Uh, but in number 22, they had a binomial argument. We had the series of i plus 4 from 1 to 6. Well, anytime you have a polynomial series, we want to split it up so that, Kendall, I turn this into... Um, How do I split this thing up? Okay, we take the series of i, and then the series of plus, plus the series of 4. Again, in each case, the same upper and lower bounds. Um, and so for the series of i, we already have a formula for constant integers. What is our constant integer formula, class? Eight times eight times eight times okay, so we do 6 times 7 all over 2. That just comes out to class... 21. And then for, uh, this is just a constant. So what is our, uh, our uh, formula for a constant series class? Cn. The constant times the upper bounds. That's just 24. And we're just adding them. And uh, what do we end up with for answer here, Kendall? 25. Is that what you have? Mm -hmm. Okay. How many have 45 for number 22? Questions on 22. By the way, what do we call this property of a, of a series where I can... Take a polynomial argument and split it into two separate ones. What is that series called? The distributive property allows you to break things down a little bit. Uh, number 24, we had a very similar one. In fact, it was once again the series, uh, we're going from 1 to 6. This time the argument was 3 negative i. How am I going to split that up as we start out? Genesis? 6. The 6. How do I split this series because it has a polynomial argument? I want to split it up. Anytime there's a polynomial. Anytime there's pluses and minuses in here. Um, I know how. I don't know how to write it. Tell me how to write it. Okay, so the series of three. There we go, the series of 3 minus the series of i, in each case going from 1 to 6. There we go. And so, uh, again, this is a constant series. So if the formula is Cn, class, we just get 18. And we already said that the series of i from 1 to 6 is 21. This just happens to be a minus or a negative 21. So we kind of cheat off the last problem we had. And uh, what are we going to have for our answer, Genesis? Negative 3. How many have negative 3 for the answer? Any questions on that? I must have mixed it with another problem. Uh -huh. That 220. That was number 25. We did that one in class yesterday. Uh, but 220 is the correct answer for 25. Um, let's go to number 26. And uh, here we have the series of 12i. And we're going from 1 to 11. Now, anytime we've got, there's no pluses and minuses, but instead of just a nice easy i, there's a coefficient on the i. Or we could have a coefficient on the i squared, for instance. Anytime that's the case, how do I not so much split it up, but rework this thing? Audrey? Right, just move the constant that, or the coefficient, if you will, out to the front so we can rewrite this as. There we go. 12 times the series of i from 
1 to 11. There we go. And uh, so we start by just finding the series of i from 1 to 11. Formula again, n times n minus 1 over 2 for consecutive integers. So 11 times 12 all over 2. And of course, that gives us initially class 66. But then we multiply the 12 by the 66 to get a nice big number. 792. How many had that for number 26? The questions on 26. Yeah, let's take a look at 28. And this one was a lot more complicated than the other ones. The series of 9i squared minus 2i uh, from 1 to 7. Okay, first we've got to split it up. What does it look like in the split format, Abby? Um, 9 times the series of i squared with 7 on the top and i equals 1 on the bottom. Okay, so from 1 to 7. And then minus 2 times the series of i with 1 to 7. There we go. And you actually did both steps. I was just looking for the first step of splitting it up into the series of 9i squared minus the series of 2i. She said, well, if I'm going to get a 9i squared, I'm going to move the 9 out front. I'm going to move the 2 out front, as we show here. So let me do the whole thing at once, which I love. That's super efficient. 9 times the series of i squared minus 2 times the series of i. Now, here we have consecutive squares, not consecutive integers. What's the formula for consecutive squares going to be, class? All right, so that means in this case that's going to be 7 times 8 times 15 all over 6. And by the way, you're going to have to multiply a 9 by this. Why not throw the 9 in the top as well, right? And then, uh, then we got minus. I'm going to throw the 2 in the top. And we said for consecutive integers, it's n, n minus 1 over 2. So that's 7 times 8 all over 2. Convenient thing about this, you could just cancel the 2. So this back end class becomes negative 56. That we can do on our heads. The next one, not so much. And so we plug it all into the calculator, call it out somebody, 9, 7, 8, 15, all divided by 6. 1, 2, 6, 0. And when we subtract 56, we get? 1,204. And that is correct. How many ended up with that answer for number 28? Right, any questions on these complex series? All right, um, let's go ahead and do number 29 together now. And number 29 looks awful, doesn't it? But as I mentioned yesterday, as we looked at a similar problem, if it looks awful, oftentimes we can simplify, and we can. So let's simplify the argument down. So instead of 7 plus i minus 1 times 12, Let's just take the, the argument. What can I do to simplify my argument? Maddie? Mm -hmm. To get? Mm -hmm. And then I can further simplify by? Mm -hmm. Right, combine the 7, negative 12 to get? Negative 5. So 12i negative 5 becomes the argument. By the way, do you see the arithmetic sequence here? First term, 7 i minus 1 instead of n minus 1, and 12 is the common difference. Okay, So there's your argument, again, from 1 to 5. Questions on how to simplify. It's basic algebra. And then we'll go ahead and do the split. What does it look like as we split this using the distributive properties plural? We'll go ahead and do the Abby shortcut here. I'm not sure why we're naming it in her honor, but mm -hmm. Michael, what would we do? Um, the 12 series sigma. Uh, 5 and then 1 at the bottom. All right. And put in i. Okay, so 12 times the series of i from 1 to 5. Mm. Minus 25. Well, there we go. We, we, we certainly could do that. Because we know the series of 5 from 1 to 5 is just going to become a minus 25 anyway. I got no problem with that. Um, calculate very quickly the series of i from 1 to 5. 15, right? It's going to be 5 times 6 over 2, which is 15, times the 12. 180 minus the 25 gives us 155. Any questions on that one? Did everyone follow what we did? All right, I want you to do the next three, 30 to 32 at your seats. 30 to 32 at your seats. Are you done? Mm -hmm. This 
looks good, but not those two seating, so you know what happened. Yeah, 30, 31, 32, the last three. We've done everything else up there on the top of the page. We just haven't done those last ones. 30 to 32. to be as simple as possible before we start doing any summations. down even if you're not finished with these three let's take a look remember the first distributive property says if you've got a binomial polynomial in general here are just two terms once you simplify the argument um, you're going to separate it into a series of ai plus or minus a series of bi in this case it's 3i and 8. then the second distributive property said if there's a constant times the argument the constant can move to the front that's also a distributive property so there's two distributive properties we use both of them here Frankly, there's no problem going from here straight to here. All right, and then from there, we evaluate this constant integer series to get 21, uh, evaluate the constant series to get 48, or consecutive integer series, 21, constant series, 48. Multiply, add 111. How many add 111 as your answer? So on the next one, again, we can go straight to the 22 times the series of i minus the series of 19, going from 1 to 11 in both cases. 
Um, we're going to start with the constant series here because it's just C times N. What did we get? 11 times 19, class? 209. And then here we're going to take 22 times whatever we evaluate the series to be 11, 12 divided by 2 gives? 66. 66. We'll multiply that by 22. 1,000 who? 1,452. Yeah. Unless I can't hear anybody. 1,452 minus 209, and we subtract, we do get? 1,243 for our answer. How many have that for the second one? All right, and then for the last one, again, we'll split this into 13 times the series of I plus the series of 8, going from 1 to 8 in each case. Uh, the constant series is the easiest. 64, we'll do 13 times the constant or consecutive integer series to get 36 times the 13, which will add the 64 and get 532. And uh, how many had that for the last one that you made it that far? All right, questions on these? Any questions here? All right, the one thing that uh, we didn't have in the homework, it didn't have here either, were uh, partial consecutive series, where instead of starting at 1 and going up to whatever the upper bound is, we start halfway there. We start partway there, I guess I should say. At your seats, I want you to find the series of i squared from 4 to 9. The series of i squared from 4 to 9, using the partial consecutive series formula, or at least the process. Anytime you're working a partial series, go from one to the top, one to the upper bound, and then subtract the same series, but this time go from one to one less than this, and just subtract that away. one correct, 271. All right, questions on the first? I didn't see a square. Oh, I'll see treated like partial or consecutive squares, or consecutive integers instead of consecutive squares, okay? The next one doesn't have a square. Give you just a moment to finish up the next one then. Again, take that same approach. Find the series from one to the upper bound, subtract the series from one to one less than the lower bound. Again, represented 1 to n, 1 to m minus 1.
I did that on purpose. All right, questions at all on partial consecutive series. All right, turn over to page 473 now. Page 473. At the bottom of the page, I want you to do numbers 9 to 14. At the very bottom of the page, do numbers 9 through 14. Page 473, bottom of the page, 9 to 14. Thank you. 
is finished. Is finished. Can you just put your head in the spot? We call the mob. <laughs> just about another minute or so to be finishing up. Page four seventy three, numbers nine through fourteen. Those who are finished. <clears throat> we'll take a look at that when we're done. For sake of time, let's go ahead and take a look at our answers here to page 473 at the bottom. We'll get to that in just a moment. Michael was first, so Michael will give you first shot at some candy here. Gavin's like, I was done before all of them. I'm sorry, you're not here. All right, eat your own candy. Number nine. <laughs> Number nine, what did you get for the series of nine from 1 to 26? 234. That is correct. 234. Number 10, the series of I from 1 to 71. 2,556. Great job. 2,556. Number 11, the series of I squared from 1 to 15. 1,240. That is correct. 1,240. Drop down to number 12. Now the series of I from 11 to 27. 323. That is correct. 3, 000, or 323. For number 13, uh, the series of 3I plus 5I squared from 1 to 6. 518. Perfect. 518. And for the candy, number 14, the series of 4 plus i minus 1 times 12 from 1 to 14. 1,148. He was perfect. Anyone else perfect, just not as fast as Michael? Okay, several of you. Questions on any of these before we look at that guy? Any of these we need to see worked? Going once on questions. Going twice on questions. Gavin, if you have questions, email me. Well, let's take a look at this one here. First thing we want to do, of course, with this uh, argument class is simplify it down. How should we simplify the argument since it's a pair of binomials? Foil, right? And so the argument here becomes... 3x squared minus i minus 10. How many have the argument simplified down there? All right, questions on simplifying the argument. All right, so from there, we're going to break it into 3 times the series of i squared minus the series of i, that's a horrible sigma, minus the series of 10, all of these going 
from 1 to 11. All right, so we're going to start with a series of i squared. I'm going to go ahead and lump the 3 in the top. So 3 times 11 times 12 times 23, all over 6. Then here we've got just the 11 times 12 over 2. And then finally the 10 times 11, negative 110. At this point, the calculator really comes in handy. We can cancel to get a negative 66, and of course, the negative 110 here. Maybe cancel to get 2 and 1. That gives us uh, whatever 66 times 23 is. Yeah, 1518. Something important happened at 1518. English history, right? Spanish. 1517 is first at I don't know, 15, anyway. Anyway, 1518 for some reason sticks out of the brain. Uh, but I'm not a history teacher, so we'll move on. And so we end up with 1,342. Did anyone get that answer on the extra one? Wow, several of you did. Good. Questions on this? All right. So we understand series inside and out, even tough ones I make up. We got this, right? Questions at all on series. All right, clear your desk, except for a clean sheet of paper. And a pencil. Gavin's like, ask a question, ask a question. Smashes his computer. <laughs> All right. So if I press mute, I won't hear him say, prepare for a quiz. All right, sheet of paper, pencil, definitely want your calculator. Sheet of paper, pencil, calculator, everything else off your desks. Even Gavin, put away your... Cheat sheet, your formula sheet. This is quiz 32. Quiz 32. Quiz 32. Don't worry, I got one for you there, Brandon. All right. Quiz 32, you get your first last name. Today's date is 4-12-22. 4-12-22, today's date. And this is quiz 32 that we're taking. All right, numbers 1 through 4, answer the questions. Write the word, the best completes each statement. 5 through 10, you're going to pick which one is which. Answers may be used once, more than once, or not at all. And then for 11 through 15, you're solving. And uh, in case you forgot the formulas, they're in the matching section. You're welcome. All right, go ahead and get started. I'll write the homework on the board, and uh, we'll end the video there. Right, keeping your work covered with that rather large quiz copy. <laughs>